Hi everybody, Russ on the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well, my friends. Happy Friday, another week. We've managed it again, another week. Congratulations. Um, and as always, we bring you the Hammers headlines every weekday, Monday to Friday. Um, now, yesterday, we was meant to have the, uh, we was meant to have the game show, and unfortunately, half the contestants didn't turn up. So we ended up last night having a, an evening with Macca and Crossy, which was quite fun. So an impromptu Q&A. Um, go back and check it out. It was really fun. Really fun. I could have just actually just switched myself off and just let them two talk, because it was an absolute hoot. Um, I need to do a joke count on how many jokes Psycho said during that show. And he just, every time, he hooked me in for a joke. And he uh, delivered it with a pom as always, as always. So check that out. Also, to, on um, on Sunday we have our latest in our Hammers in Hot Water series. We'll be talking about the Booger Man. Here comes the Boogers Man. Um, so we did Savio last week, and this week we are doing Marco Boogers, talking about his his time at West Ham and his time after West Ham, which is sometimes more interesting than his time during West Ham. Although he had quite an exciting. Um, small small period at west ham let's say that but we will be doing the we will be doing the game show we will be doing the game show i've got a, a host of people lined up for next uh for the next one be you probably in july so keep an eye on that so the only way you know when we're doing it is by hitting the bell notification and, and becoming a subscriber it's free so if you look where we are now if it's red you're not a subscriber so just hit it if it goes grey, you're now a subscriber if you hit the bell notification every time we put something up it will give you a little ding dong and that's it Simples. But anyway, bring to you the Hammers headlines for Friday the 24th in association with the KUMB.com lads. Three stories as always. The first one is about a potential incoming, or a boat was two about potential incomings, and one's just a bit of a funny story, sort of an unfindly story. Um, but apparently, according to many, many sources in the last couple of days, West Ham appear to be out in front in their pursuit for the whole city forward, Keen Lewis Potter. We've been speaking about him for ever, it seems. Um, I mean, the likes of Brentford, um, also the likes of Everton apparently entering the frame to sign him. Watford put a cheeky bid in for him, who got obviously recently relegated into the championship, which was rejected. Um, he's one of Hull's most important assets over the last couple of years. He's only 21, as we know, uh, and he's broken through recently in a big way into the whole side and also into the England international side, getting into the under-21s. He notched 30 goals uh, and six assists in League One two seasons ago, while a step-up may have been a bit um, daunting for some. Not for not for Lewis. He took in his stride, knocked up 12 goals last season and provided four assists. Indeed, the winger appears to be progressing at some sort of rate of knots, in all honesty. Um, while Hull finished 19th in the Championship last season, Lewis's performances were far superior to the rest of the side. He really was a standout uh, performer. Um, now, obviously, we, we know that multiple Premier League sides, we said, are vying to give him a chance at the top flight football, the toppest flight in football. However, um, it does seem that we are out in front in our pursuit. Uh, we're above the likes of our rivals um, in terms of Brentford, in terms of Everton. Um, the pair, apparently, Brentford, had a, they had a... It was eight or twelve million pound bid rebuffed right at the beginning of of the summer transfer window, um, and as I said, Watford have put a little cheeky bid in the other day, which was rebuffed as well. And as I said, Everton, Fat Frank is looking at him as well. Um, now, you know, for me, I think oh, I'd, I'd love I'd love KLP to. He's already got the acronym. He's he's not a KDB KLP, um, and I think you know, although twenty one, it might seem a bit of a daunting jump into the Premier League. You look at someone like, I'll say it very quietly, Deli Alley, who was at MK Dons who were in League One and moved to them down the three point lane and made a huge impact. I think he contributed something like nineteen goals contributions in his first season for um so I, I people can do the step up. I mean you look at the progress of Boeing, you look at the progress of maybe Cy Bren Rama at times they're both impressed during their time at West Ham. Um neither are thrusted into the action too soon. Boeing was obviously our our sort of super sub, wasn't he, two seasons ago and then this season he's sort of really 
um, had the shackles taken off and this season was very much Ben Rama as the super sub. So we'll see what happens uh, in next season with him. So I think a move for KLP, he would be in safe hands for the Hammers uh, and, and in terms of his progression into uh, into top flight football. Now, another incoming, apparently a very imminent one, as we all know, well, as we're all hoping, is Ariola? We hope so because Sam Johnson's gone to Crystal Palace. Nick Pope's gone to gone to Newcastle. So if you want a, if you want a decent goalkeeper, there's only one left, really, to be honest. Um, but apparently, uh, was it a tweet by um, Super ITK for Bridget Romano said that West Ham are finalising are finally progressing in talks to sign Ariel on a, on a permanent deal. Agreement now close with positive feelings of the players side too. West Ham are confident um, of the deal costing around 12 million euro, about 10 and a half, 11 million quid. Uh, and also Jason Steinberg was as reiterated that as well. So two sort of good sources as well as X also mentioning it as well. So, you know, 12 million quid, uh, I just want it done now. Just what it done now, but apparently it's imminent. Uh, I think the only thing in discussion is is still the players' wages. He was on reportedly one hundred twenty five thousand pound a week at PSG, with them paying a considerable amount in his loan spell last season. Um, so it's obviously trying to meet in the middle somewhere there. Um, the idea, I think, it's been touted as a five year deal. He's going to be signing. So with him, Gued Zuma. That little triangle could be our little triangle for the next five years. That's a great base. That's a great base to progress and have a good, uh, a solid defence. That's what we need this, se this season, a solid defence. So we'll see. So it could be sooner rather than later, Ariel. They have until the end of the month to, uh, I believe, to exercise their uh, the 11 million, sorry, 12 million euro option. Um, so uh, you've got another, got another six days. Why, what are we waiting for? Who knows? And find Nalamon, a little funny, not a little funny story, but I just thought it was quite an interesting story about do, do, do super Andy Carroll. Um, very, I try and do like an and finally. Do you know what I mean? Like we did the Carlos Tevez one. And then this one's Andy Carroll. Now, the former West Ham striker, as well as West Brom, Newcastle, Reading, um, he's on the verge of moving to Belgium Giants Club Rouge, according to reports. Um, Carroll was released by Albion following the expiration of his short-term deal at the Hawthorns last season, but now looks set for an unlikely transfer, uh, which could see him make his Champions League debut at the age of 33 years old. Obviously, recently married as well, uh, Mr. Carroll. The Club Rouge were crowned Belgian champions for the 18th time last year under the guidance of former um, West Brom man Karl Hofsken, Hofkens. Um, the reward for achievement is automatic qualification for the Champions League, a tournament they've regularly been members in in recent years. Despite a stint at Liverpool between 2011 and 2013, Andy Carroll was never involved in Champions League football, um, with the Reds only qualifying for the competition in the season after he left uh, to West Ham. Very similar to Pop Robson, wasn't it? When he gets on leaving and we'd win the cup. Um, this means he could he could now make his debut in uh, club football's biggest tournament at the age of 33 if the deal is completed. The Geordie Star scored three goals in 14 appearances for the Baggies last campaign before being released at the exp expiry of his contract. So Andy Carroll, I, I don't know if it's the oldest debut, Champions League debut. Someone's going to have to find that out. But it, it's, it's up there. It's up there. So good luck on your move, Andy, to Bruges. Um, and and hopefully be in a Champions League. Fair play. Um, and that's it, my friends. That is it. As I said, if you are if you're around this weekend, we've got loads of good stuff. You can go back and watch um, the evening with Maka and Crossy. Great evening. Great fun. You know, Crossy was on top form. Um, he even had to go and put his phone on charge. Hilarious. Uh, and Maka was just Maka as always, uh, as you can imagine. And also we've got, as I said, we've got some stuff coming out. So actually tomorrow, I believe, we may have uh, Anton is doing a profile on um, on Keen Lewis Potter, actually. So check that. That'll be um, tomorrow sometime during the, it's usually tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And then Sunday morning, we'll be talking about Marco Boogers. What a great way to, to finish off the week. So take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Stay lucky. Stay cheeky. Stay positive. Stay hydrated. It's still, it's still sticky. It's clammy. It's clammy wherever out there. Don't like it. And um, I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cha-cha for now. Have a lovely weekend, my friends. <laughs>